Hey, what's happening guys? Today we're going to talk a little bit about terminating wires using different types of terminators including ring connectors and spade connectors. So these ones we're using today are from Solder Stick and Solder Stick is the sponsor of this video. I'm going to put some links <clears throat> down below where you can check out their products and a discount code if you buy any of them. So that's pretty cool. So what we got here are different sizes of spade connectors. We have three different sizes here. The red is from 18 to 22 gauge, blue is 14 to 16, yellow is 12 to 10. And we have a female and a male of each connector and they simply lock together like that. You've got good insulation these are excellent to use. You need to match them up to the wire size. That's one of the things we're going to talk about. And you can't crimp them with your needle nose pliers or your lineman's pliers. You need to use the correct pliers. So we'll talk about that as well. So let's start off with, I've got some, uh, this is 20, 20 or 22 gauge. This is a, uh, Twenty gauge. This is some twenty gauge silicon wire, and this is stranded wire. Why is it stranded wire? Because you should not crimp solid wire. It doesn't work that way. You want to give it a little twist. You have to be super tight when you're doing this. Okay. And then what I like to do. Here's my crimpers. They're just a random generic pair of crimpers nothing special but they are the ratcheting type and that's the type you want so that with each squeeze you don't lose the force you've left out it keeps that force in and then it adds to it okay so what i like to do is <clears throat> i like to fit the connector in the jaws and then get it just seated in there see now we got it good where we want it And we can place our wire in and we want the edge of the insulation to come right up to the metal and then we crimp like that <laughs> there is a nice crimp terminal and then we have to give it the pull test right that's good that's not going anywhere now you want to inspect it after you're done and take a look see now that kind of twisted in there like that i would fail that connector and redo it so that everything is straight and what i'm going for here is we are we're looking at the standards from the nasa workmanship uh book this is a NASA Workmanship Standards, National Aeronautics and Space Administration, Johnson Space Center, Texas. This book, number two, section 2.01, revision date uh, 330, 2001, page one. And we're talking about solder tin, stranded wire, or solid wire. And according to NASA standard 8739.4, uh, parentheses, 4.3.4, the crimping of solid wire component leads or stranded wire that has been solder tin is prohibited. Why is it prohibited? It is prohibited because solid core wire does not deform and transform like the stranded wire does. Let me cut off this connector here and let me see if I can get this one out of here and we'll take a look at something. Okay, here we go. I extracted one of them so that you can get a better look at it. Now, I'm going to zoom in here a little bit. We'll put the wire in there. And I want you to see what, what I am saying it should look like. It should look about like that. The wire that, that comes through there, I don't know how well you're going to be able to see that. Yeah, right there. See the bit where that wire comes through? 
it should not extend out into the blade area. All right. I don't know if I can crimp without that red thing on there, but we're going to try it because I want you to see. Yeah, I don't think that's going to do anything. Yeah, I'd have to and cut it off. One second. So if you're looking to, you know, inspect your crimps after they're done and you want to stick to the tough NASA standards, other things are the wire ends should be visible. You should be able to look down in there and see the wire ends. A minimum of one wire diameter beyond the conductor crimped edge should be visible. Okay. Heat shrink, if they have heat shrink, these ones aren't heat shrink, but we'll look at something that are. The tubing has to be tight, symmetrical, and undamaged. That includes discoloration. It says a slight discoloration of the heat shrink tubing is acceptable, but evidence of burning or charring is not. And also what you want to look for are what they call birdcage strands. When you, when you, yeah, let's do it over here. When you strip the end of the wire, and then we give it a little twist. And then say, you know, we want to put it into one of these terminations. And we kind of push it in there. I twist a little too much. Hang on. See how those are kind of ugly and all over the place? We call that bird caged. You don't want any strands to be bird caged. These conductors should slip in here readily. There should be at least one wire diameter visible beyond the end of the crimped part. And then you just get them in here. I like to hold one end of the wire until I get it going. Then generally it takes two hands. And you got to get them to release. <laughs> which is sometimes easier said than done. But once you've done that, you know, your, your, your insulation is not damaged. You know, the wire is clearly visible. Ooh, that one was not crimped so well. And that's why you do the pool test. Let's do it again. in the right place there feed that in no I don't think my crimpers are closing down enough they might need adjusting but anyway you get the idea there should be no damage or deformation to the insulation. Pool test. Ooh. I'm not crimping it, but then these are little tiny wires. Let me see if I can find a little bit bigger wire we can work with. That's some 18 gauge wire. That should work. A little bit better. A little something more to grip on to. lined up there we go now we're talking so there we say this is what you should be inspecting for can you see the tip of the wire in there yes is there any damage here no does the insulation of the wire insert into the insulation of the termination Yes, so we're good to go. Now, let's take a look at another type of determination. These are ring terminals. So these are used when you need a more secure situation. Um, you know, you pass a bolt through there. 
and there's no way this can fall off or work its way loose unless the entire bolt does. But same idea, we insert our wires like so. Now if you look here, that's really all the wire you want out of there, so that's a little too long. So I'm just going to twist that up real tight there. And I'm going to cut about that much off of it so that we get our length right. There we go. Now, we'll put that one on the crimper. The old crimpomatic. I can get it my hands to... there we go get it where you want it good squeeze nope that did not crimp I'm gonna try it again here That's better. So the last step is these are actually heat shrink on the insulation. So got the old heat gun here. And we'll plug it in. Give me a second to warm this guy up. All right, so I got my heat gun on. It is set for what is that, about 380. It might not be hot enough. Turn up the heat a little. There we go. I turned it up to 460. There we go. Crimped, insulated, close to waterproof. And again, from those NASA standard books, um, slight discoloration is allowed but there can be no cuts or marks and the bottom should be even. So if you need some way to terminate your wires, and trust me, any type of termination, mechanical termination, is better than just sticking raw wire into some socket. Check these out. Solder stick spade connectors, solder stick ring connectors. There's a link down below where you can get a discount. If you enjoyed this video, I hope you give me a thumbs up. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Big thanks to Solder Stick for sponsoring this video. Big thanks to you guys for watching. Happy Thanksgiving. That's it. I'm out. Peace.